we are on Burnham Overy State Beach and have a look at this. We've got some prime constructive waves. If you have a look here, we have a very much a wide, wide beach, very flat, low lying, wide beach. And that is because of the constructive waves. You've got something called the swash. As the sea comes in, the swash brings sediment up the beach. And in this instance, you have a very strong swash bringing sediment up the beach, creating a very flat, wide beach. The reason why it's flat is because it has a weak backwash. So when the water goes back up to sea, if you have a look here, because it, all the energy has been dissipated through the sand, and if you have a pebble beach through the pebbles, it doesn't have a strong backwash, taking sediment away, which means you have a very flat and wide beach. If you imagine an area where you might have a long fetch, the fetch being the, uh, the, 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 um, the time in which wind blows on a wave, if you have a long fetch and you could have very stormy conditions, meaning you have destructive waves, you have a very very weak swash, but a very strong backwash, taking sediment away, high rates of erosion through hydraulic action, abrasion, creating very much a, a short, but very steep sloping beach. So if you have a look here, look how wide this beach is. It's being created through the swash, but also through the process of longshore drift, which I, which I explained in a few Years ago, the prevailing wind is in this direction. The wind brings the, the, uh, the waves, the swash, in this direction, and over time it comes in an angle and goes back out at right 90 degrees. It comes in an angle and goes back out at 90 degrees. And if we actually have a look here, you can see the direction of the waves, prevailing wind coming in this direction. And then when they go back out to sea, they'll go back out at right angle. What that means is that sediment will be transported along this beach in this direction. And over time, sediment will be moved along and that could cause problems. If you have longshore drift occurring and you don't have any management, the beach could be taken away and erosional processes could suddenly come into play, which could damage coastal areas. So what you need to do is a hard management process groins, building groins, and a groin will be used to build sediment up on one side of the groin, which means the beach will increase in size, allowing the beach to be a natural defence for the coastline. What you could also then do is take the sediment from the groin on the side that's built up, and you then, through beach nourishment, transport it back to where the sediment came from to allow the beach to, be, um, to grow in size and be a natural barrier. Because, as, as I've explained in previous videos, what you must consider is the, the stakeholders of that area. And in this instance, a very busy beach further up that way, we have lots of tourists. And when you have lots of tourists, tourists want to see a very natural environment. They don't want to see loads of gabions, loads of rock armour. They want to see a natural environment, and beach nourishments will be able to do that. Behind us here, we also have, uh, we have sand dunes. And I'm going to explain the formation of sand dunes and also behind that salt marshes in my next video. But we can see here some amazing longshore drift occurring. We can see this swash coming in, creating a very flat and wide beach, a very weak backwash, creating very much constructive waves and a, a stunning view here over towards the North Sea. In the distance, we've got wind turbines and a very strong wind. So we've got renewable energy out in the distance there through loads, hundreds of wind turbines some great geography in action.